about is, is that what, what do you tell your officials in terms of, uh, uh, we don't see a whole lot of 10-10 of rounds in this sport. Those first two rounds were, were very slow, you know, as I think anybody would, would agree upon. When, when there's very little action like that, what, what do you tell your judges in terms of, does a 10-10 round exist or, or not? You know, I, I, I'm not used to this microphone, so I apologize. Um, yeah, you know, uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 rounds are an anomaly. Um, we have a pre-fight meeting with our judges before every fight. And a matter of fact, this very subject did come up. And the judges in this particular fight were some of the best judges in MMA, Derek Clary, Sal Diamato, and Chris Lee. Um, you should be able, if you're a top-notch A-plus judge, you should be able to discern through the scoring criteria who wins a fight, even if it's ra razor thin. Um, does a 10-10 round come up? Yes, but in the three years that I've been, almost three years I've been the executive director, we have not had a 10-10 had a round. And um, I think it's incumbent upon the uh, judges to, you know, be on the top of their game and to be able to, to pick a winner in that round. Because somebody, one effective strike or kick can, de can determine who wins a round. It's kind of a long answer, but. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Bob, just one quick note for clarification. Just kind of reading between the lines a little bit. I mean, when you say that, you know, one strike, one punch or kick could be the difference in a round and that a top judge should be able to determine the winner. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but would you say it's your position that you kind of recommend against a judge issuing a 10-10 a, a round? Not at all. Um, and that's a, that's a fair question. I'm glad you asked me. No. These judges, just like in the boxing events, you get a score, you get a score around the way you see it. I don't put any pressure or stress on them. It's totally incumbent upon them. I have something that I use, which is called the pot index, for those of you that are familiar with it. And uh, it, it actually tracks the officials, who's in the majority, who's in the minority, for difficult rounds, for easy rounds. There's some flaws to the system, but if you're familiar with those flaws, then it, it, it is one form of measurement uh, as to who you're better judges are and who have proven themselves under, you know, a lot of pressure. Like tonight's a big, a big time fight for those judges. Don't think for a second that, you know, it's very easy for somebody to say, hey, I saw a 3-2 this way or that way. But you put your butt in that chair for five minutes and when you don't see a lot of action, you, you've got to really always be on top of your game. But it's even more difficult when there's lot less punches being thrown. For instance, it's the last round. Okay, Thompson was up 10-9, you know, with what, 45 seconds left to go? Man, it went the other way. It went 10-9, it went and I'll answer the question before it's asked. The one judge had tatted 10-8. We went over it in the debriefing, and that 10-8 was unacceptable. Not that it would have affected the outcome of the fight, but just to share it with you, uh, we certainly, um, we strive to do the best we can, but, you know, we don't always succeed. And that judge should have scored that round 10-9. You can't have a three-point swing in 50 seconds. Or it's certainly, um, I don't even know if anomaly is the right word or just, you know, he just missed it. And usually he's spot on. But thank God it didn't affect the overall outcome of the fight. And in our opinion, which we do for a living, and we don't have a vested interest in who wins or loses, we had Mr. Woodley winning 3-2.